Hello there and welcome to lecture 3, okay, still module 6, final volume method. So in this lecture we're going to talk about linear solvers in OpenFone, okay? So we already addressed uh, the F SB, SB schemes, you know, all the methods, a little bit about the, we talk a little bit about CFL numbers. So let's see about crunching numbers. Now these are the linear solvers. So after you discretize all the equations or after open from discretize your, your, all your equations, you assemble a linear system like this, okay? So basically you have this and now you need to solve this using an iterative or direct method. So usually we don't use direct methods because there are two they require a lot of memory, so this is out of the question. We use iterative methods, okay? So this is the matrix of coefficients in this matrix, okay? You have the influence, okay, the, the of all the cells centers and their influence in the other cell centers. Now you have everything here, okay, all that information. This is the, what the, the no value, and this, are, this is what you know about your your solution. So these are boundary conditions and explicit contributions. Okay. So the linear solvers are set in FV solution. Okay. And every single variable that you need to, yeah, that you solve in open for, you need to define the linear solvers, the iterative method that you use to solve that system. Okay. So in open for, there are many methods implemented. And unfor unfortunately, I cannot say that there is a general method, a method that it will work the best for all cases. It's very problem dependent. So here I'm going to give you some 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 guidelines. So okay, but in this FB solution, see that you have the the block here uh, solvers where you define your linear solvers by variable, and then you have these entries related to the pressure velocity coupling. That in the next lecture we are going to to talk about this uh, coupling. So basically, here you define. No, the variable that you are solving. So remember that if you don't give this information, uh, the solver is going to complain and it's going to tell you, okay, look at that, you are missing this. Okay, so there is not a big deal. So you put it here, then you choose the solver and the preconditioner. Okay, so preconditioner is acceleration technique for the solver. Now these are Newton Krilov solvers, so how to accelerate this. And then you give a tolerance and relative tolerance. Okay, there are many methods available. And as I say, I cannot say that the what I'm showing you here is the best method. It's very problem dependent, but I will give you some standard practices. So one thing that your solver this will will stop iterating when it reach this tolerance, and the tolerance is, is computed something like this. Okay, so you are going to see some some residuals on the screen, and what you are seeing the screen, by the way, are the initial residuals. So also, we have electro related to that. So here you, you, you can define toler tolerance, absolute and relative. Okay. So it, whatever you reach first, it's going to stop and advance. Okay. So this is the absolute tolerance 10 to the minus six and relative. Okay. Relative is the difference between iterations. So in this case, zero means switch off. You are only using absolute, but you can put here, for instance, 0 0.01. So when you reach the, the uh, a relative tolerance between iterate, uh, iteration of 0 0.01, it will stop and move to the next iteration. You have to be careful that you need to put here, uh, so re re reasonable values because otherwise you, you can have unconverged iterations, okay? So, and that is dangerous because on converged iteration, you have a solution, but you didn't reach a conver uh, convergence. So there is a lot uh diffusion that you are adding there so you can do it like this okay so sometimes you have p and then it will ask you for p final so what you can do is also like this you okay so remember that this can be a variable and dollar p you use the same schemes and then you can change some keywords so probably sometimes in this case it will be something like this Okay, so this means that the initial iterations that you are using this method and then for the final iteration, you use this one. So you put more more effort, more accuracy in the fi final one. So it's a way to speed up things. And then for you, you have this method and see also that you have the option to add the minimum and maximum number of iteration. This is up to you to put it there, but be careful that as you put a limit in the maximum number of iteration, you might be <clears throat> reaching that situation that you have on conversion iteration, so be careful. I like to use this auction, minimum iterations, and you said I put three, but it, it, it is up to you. Let me fix there. Okay, so then 
these are the solvers, the linear solvers that you have in OpenFund. So as you see, you have many solvers. You have the source code located here. So these are the, the solvers. These are segregated solvers, okay? And also you have the preconditioner, okay? So each solver, there are different combinations. So again, there is no, they, they that there is no definite uh, method combination of solvers that is going to give you the, the best performance. Very problem dependent, okay? And then also you have uh, <coughs> iterative solvers, now relaxation solvers, they call it smooth, smooth solvers and stuff like this, okay? So here you have the, the location. And some general, general <coughs> guidelines that I want to give you, okay? So uh, it's very prevalent and hard, even hardware dependent, the choices of the solver. So most of the time, the GAMG or the multi-grid is the best choice for symmetric matrices, for instance, Pressure is symmetric, Laplacians no, are symmetric. Okay, so most of the time this is the best solver, but not necessarily will be not the case always. So something that this solver should converge fast in less than 20 iterations. If you are running and you see that the, the, the multigrid is converging like in 100 iterations, there is a problem and it's better to change the solver or the smoothness of the solver, okay? So in this situation, you can change to the PCG solver, okay? So we have found also in our experience that running with more than, with a lot of core and usually more than a thousand, usually the PCG is better than the multigrid. So as you see, even, even depends on the, on the parallelization, okay? So these are the choices that we're given. Now use the multigrids, you see that is the conversion is slow, switch to the PCG, and if you are running with a lot of processors, probably the PCG is the best choice right ahead. And then you have asymmetric matrices, so velocity, okay, the, all those variables, K, omega, whatever. And for those, you can use this method, the PBCG stat with this precondition, okay? So this is a good choice, and I have to say that probably 99% of the time this will work fine, okay? And something also to stress that solving for the asymmetric matrices is relatively inexpensive, it's very fast. Instead, all the effort is done in solving for pressure. This is expensive equation, okay, for, for, for pressure. Uh, besides, you no, know, for asymmetric, asymmetric matrices, besides you no know, velocity, you also have you no know, all the transported quantities, stuff like K, omega, epsilon, T, scalars, okay, volume fraction. All of those variables are asymmetric matrices. Instead, pressure it is always a symmetric matrix, and and then well, you sh you stay with these two methods, okay. Later, we, when we do some other cases, I, I'm going to show you some other methods, and you will get a, an idea. Uh, then usually, uh, as I mentioned, computing the velocity and transported quantities is, is inexpensive and fast. So it's a good idea to use a tight tolerance in the order of 10 to the minus eight, okay, for this variable. Instead for the pressure, it stays tough between 10 to the minus five, 10 to the minus six, okay? Because it, it is expensive, probably you, you already realize that. Also, you have something called diagonal solver that is just back, uh, back substitution. No? So for instance, this is used to compute density. No? The equation of a state is used. So if you are running, when you run here, you will see at the beginning that here you have a description of the solver. So in this case, it's the smooth solver for the, for the asymmetric matrices or velocity, and then for pressure, which is the symmetric matrices using the PCG with this preconditioner. Here you have the information of the number of iterations that it, it is converging. So remember that I told you that I like to put the minimum iterations to three or at least to one. I like to do so in this case, it's not, it's not, it's not iterating. And okay, this might be okay, but you know, remember that when you iterate, also you are helping and linearizing your linear system and everything and it adds more stability. So I like to do at least one iteration and sometimes I go and can go up to three iterations, okay? So that's why you will see the minimum, the mean iter keyword that sometimes I use it. It's just because of that. And see that for instance, in pressure is just converging in one iteration. And usually for pressure, I like to put three, three iterations. Mean iter, I put it three, three iterations because that helps at linearizing your equation. Okay, it will take more time to compute, but you are getting more accuracy and stability. Important that you here you are reporting initial residuals and final residuals. So later in the lecture that we have, we, we're going to see this, but the final residuals 
are the ones that you are defining here. So the solver will iterate until reaching this tolerance. So this is the final residuals. And then you have the initial residuals. So remember, it is an iterative method. So you need to have an initial guess. So these are your initial residuals, okay? So in this case, see that is converging in serial iteration means that the initial residuals are the same as the final. So this is a direct indication that you have reached an steady solution. That doesn't happen very often, okay? But this is how you can you know, inter interpret the, the, these residuals. Okay, later in the, the late lecture dedicated for that, we're going to talk about that. So what about the tolerances? So sometimes I, I talk about loose and tight tolerance, okay? So when I talk about loose tolerance, you can see, do something like this for P. So see that P, you use this loose tolerance and then tight tolerance, you put it like this. So usually you are going to do stuff like this during the initial iterations and then the final iteration, you put more effort, okay? So it's possible to control that. Uh, you can do it also for velocity, but usually for velocity, it is inexpensive. So I like to go right ahead and put a tight tolerance, okay? So velocity and transported quantities. Instead pressure, this is expensive. So you can do something like that. Uh, what I mentioned about the minimum and maximum iterations, it is recommended. Usually, by default, the maximum number of iterations in OpenFone is 1,000, okay? So usually, I, I, I don't like to put this one, I just put, put min iterations, okay? Two, three, and I leave this one to the to reach the maximum default values. Uh, so, so there are some solvers, now, the piece and pimple that you can enable this auction momentum predictor, okay, later we're going to see what is that about. But when you enable this one, you have the auctions to solve for P and P final. So this is where you can do this trick about putting more effort in the final iteration. So P final it is just the very, very final iteration. So see that you are putting a lot of effort here and here you get kind of a loose solution. So better here, let me put here something like this, better like this. So this one, it will help you to speed up things, okay? But it's your problem, it's, it's expensive, it's not a difficult physics, you can go right ahead and have a tight tolerance in both variables. And this is not when we're talking about PMP final is this. Okay, so you see your screen and you're going to see a report here. So see that here we're using multigrid for P and see that you have P, 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 and then the final, the very, very final iteration is where you are going to use this tolerance. And for the other iterations, these three, you are going to use this tolerance. So I see that you can get some, some, some time savings there. Okay, but sometimes, it is not necessarily, and you can put a, a tight, uh, a tight tolerance for for all variables. Uh, so there is something also this utility that probably you have seen that very often I use it renumber mesh and remember for an info renumber mesh and you can get more information. But basically, I recommend you to always use this. So this utility, what it's doing, this is the linear system that you get. Not so this is the actual linear system okay of a of a of a problem and if i will recall this is a driven cavity so see that what happens that when you use this utility you make your linear system no here more dominant in the in the diagonal so when you have something like this you will converge faster it's strongly recommended to always use renumber mesh so this is the original linear system and then after using this when you get here so if you compare both cases you will see that here the convergence it's much faster. So I always recommend you to use renumber mesh, okay? You can run it in parallel, by the way. Uh, a few things about multigrid solvers, and I already mentioned this, that most of the time, no, this is the choice, okay? This is the, the one that you should use for pressure, no? But always monitor the solution because it may happen that it, it, it can take too long to converge, and if that is the case, you should switch to the PCG or something else because that is telling you that this is not anymore the, the 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 model to use. It's not efficient, okay. And also, we have seen that you you when running with large number of cores, also it does not perform very well. So this over the multi grid, it takes many options, okay. So also those options that you have in the in the dictionary, they they haven't been optimized at all, okay. So probably. Those are not recommended values, but you can use different actions. I'm not going into details now. You need to, to see a little bit how this works, but this is just just controlling you know, how you are iterated. But also you have the option you now multi-grid with PP final, but 
this is up to you know to change these auctions okay honestly these recommended values work well most of the time but it might happen that sometimes you can tweak these parameters and you can get a little bit uh, better uh, be be better convergence speed okay uh linear solvers and tolerances for steady simulations and let's mention that so remember that when the initial residuals, they reach your final residuals, that is an indication of a steady, a steady behavior. So you can add a tolerance in the, when you're running a steady simulations. And basically, you add that tolerance. You have this simple keyword always in every solution, and you put it here. So when your initial residuals reach this value, automatically the solver will stop and will tell you, okay, you have reached a convert solution okay that doesn't happen very often just i want to stress that again but it may happen from time to time so if you want to put this residual control with the steady solvers this is a way to do it uh so in this case i'm showing you this is a a prototype case that i, I run i don't recall which one probably i think it was the pipe case the one that we use for the the one that we use for for, for the post-processing and see that this is a comparison of different linear solvers, okay? So you have different combinations. This is with matrix renumbering, renumber mesh, okay? And see that every single solver is going to give you different, uh, it's, they're all going to give you the same value, okay? That is very important. Sometimes there are some small differences, but the value should be, should be the same or very close. But see that the time to compute the solution change. And in this particular case, remember that I mentioned that the, the multigrid most of the time is the best one. So see that in this case, the multigrid is not the best one. It's one of the slowest. And this one was the, the best one. Okay, so see that using the multigrid with no reordering, but then using the multigrid with reordering, see the influence of the reordering. So Agbikes always use renumber mesh. And also if we look at the this case where we're using renumber, see by that by no means the multigrid was the, the fastest one. The fastest one was this one, the PCG. Okay, so it's very problem dependent, hardware dependent, and even the <coughs> And even depends in, in boundary conditions in the setup and uh, all everything you have done. Okay, so here you have some exercise. Okay, so you can try to to <coughs> to solve this, this exercise to address this exercise. So we can talk about this one during the Q and A session. But basically, here I'm just asking you just to pick up any of the previous tutorials that we have done and just play with the with the solvers. Okay, change the linear solvers and see your outcome and draw your own conclusion. So do something similar to this. So this is all for these linear solvers. Thank you for your attention and see you next time. Bye.